Hey, Jason Spangler here, the Santee Swapper. I've got this uh, collection here that I just got in yesterday. This was a lady who found me and reached out to me. She's had a collection that belonged to a couple of members of her family, and she was curious to know if I'd be interested, so we exchanged emails, shared pictures with me of what was in the box, and we agreed to a price. I sent that to her, and then she uh, sent me the box. So I wanted to open this for everybody just because I know that the unboxing videos are kind of one thing that people enjoy seeing. And I know there's a couple of interesting uh, things in here that I'm really excited to get. Uh, so one thing I thought I'd show you just to start off with, uh, the box came actually with kind of like a, a little crack here, a little bust. So that sometimes happens with the uh, USPS. They're a little rough on boxes. But anyways, what I'll do is get my BSA Western sheath knife, official BSA, and uh, use this to open up this box. So maybe what I'll do is just come right in here where there already was a, a damaged spot. And I'm gonna slice into that cardboard and get into it. So what's interesting about this collection is it's definitely two different generations because as you'll see when I get into it, um, there's a big gap in the age of some of the patches. And so um, but there's something really, really cool in here that I'm excited about and I'll definitely show everybody. Right, that was easy peasy. So a couple of things, oftentimes you get little books in these collections, not really something I'm big about, but there you go. Now this is like I said, so you look at this book, Creative Campfires, and this is, let's see, trying to find a year here, 1974. Okay, so keep that in mind, like 1970s era, same thing with this song, look like that. So in this collection, we're gonna see there's like two different eras here, and I'm thinking that this handbook is probably from that earlier inter era. So I'm not going to try to pull it out. This is kind of cool. I'm not sure I've, I'm not sure I really had one of these before where there's a, a BSA issued cloth um, book cover with a little button. I don't actually remember seeing that before. And uh, so this handbook that's in here, let's see if I can find the date on it. I think I know it's going to be pretty old because I know some of the stuff in here. Yeah. Copyright 1948. It's pretty old. All right. I'm going to show this sash in just a minute. That's one thing I'm really interested in. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, pretty cool. Look at all that. Okay, so we got a bunch of pens, all kinds of stuff. I'll look and see if I see anything really that stands out. How about this guy? Hold that up to the camera. Oops, sorry about that. Hard to zoom in. So that is a really super small BSA pen, and it has a really old style eagle on it and head. And it's a pen. So that is a, I'm almost sure that this is not something I usually get in, not something I'm, I have to look this up in one of my reference books, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a position pen that would have probably gone, it's not even enough to be collar brass. That's what's got me a little thrown off because of the style of pen back on it. So let me show you what I mean by collar brass because I think there's one in here as well, if I remember correctly. Okay, yeah. So take a look at this. So this bigger one right here, okay, I'm almost sure that that is Senior Patrol Leader. And back in the day, I think, if I'm right, that Assistant Senior Patrol Leader and Senior Patrol Leader have, have flipped. So I think three bars was Senior Patrol Leader. And then this guy right here is a smaller pin. And that actually looks like it might be for either Scoutmaster or Assistant Scoutmaster. But look on the back how it's got that really old style screw back pin. So I'm going to do a little research on that. I, I really do like these pens and these are going in my permanent collection but i just uh i don't i don't see them that often that i never really know what they are so i know they're pretty old uh this whole voice this looks like it goes to a clarinet or something or you know it's a wind wind instrument there here's an old boy scout uh, whistle from france <laughs> Ooh, still works okay sorry about that everybody uh this is pretty cool check this out just because how old it is look at that fleur-de-lis that is a Super duper duper old Florida Lee, and of course this is a collapsible cup. Um, looks like it's, it's seen better days, but if I get it to come out anyways. I can't get it to come out very well. That's a collapsible cup, and that is super duper old. See if there's anything else in here that really stands out. Um, you know, a lot of people get excited when they get these pins because there's could be some cool stuff going on. There's an old Cub Scout patch. I think that's a Cub Master patch. Uh, it's toil, it's not felt. So not sure how old that one is. Oh, anything else? A lot of buttons in here. 
I'll have to do some homework on these guys and see if these uh, pins like this and this second class pin are really old. It's really, really hard to tell because, to, you know, to the blind eye, this does not look any different than the one that my scout got at the recent Court of Honor when uh, she got second class. But you have to look at the maker on the back and everything to kind of figure that out. So that's some old stuff there. All right. Another whistle. Sound check. Okay, works good. Belt. Again, some more recent patches. Uh, French Creek Council. So this collection came to me from Virginia, but that's not necessarily where the scouters were doing their business. Um, this came from a lady, and I think it was something that was sort of like in her family. All right, here's something I totally don't don't know, and I'm going to show it to everybody, and you can tell me what you know about it. I have no idea what this is. I've never seen it before. I think it's really cool. It, uh, it I mean, it's it's definitely like embroidered, and but it's just a really really older style look of the, uh, and and then look at it. It's like a double sided thing, right? So there's one on this side, okay, and then one on this side. So what? What would that be in this style of cloth? I mean, it's not a neckerchief. It, it can only be kind of a table topper type thing, but it's just so, it's so unusual. I don't know what that is. I just know it's really old because that style of fleur de lis is, you know, ancient. So, got your good old Philmont neckerchief, a couple of those. See this all the time, no problem. Some different neckerchief slides in here. Some cool little stuff. All right. Here's what I'm really excited about. So I collect these, but I confess I have very few of these, and I'm not even sure I'm going to embarrass myself on the camera and tell you I know exactly what these are. But these are very old BSA insignia patches. They are position patches uh, for adults. So I'm going to go out on a limb here without doing my homework. I'm going to say that I think this is that silver there with the green. I'm thinking that is like Scoutmaster. And I'm thinking this is assistant scoutmaster based on the gold with the green. And then this blue one would be sort of like a district position or council position, which would mean the blue. Um, but there's a reference book that I can use that talks about the different little knots and scrolls and the squatty birds and everything else. Uh, but these are super old. I'm thinking here that these are probably 1930s, uh, something to that effect. And I'll show you another reason why I think that because something else in here. Um, this is kind of cool. This is what we call a khaki and red community strip. Um, Auburn, I imagine there might be some people, although I don't think this was meant to be Auburn, uh, Alabama, but you know, if you're an Auburn fan, hey, look at that. But these were worn back in the 1940s, and so they've been worn on the shoulder here, and it would have been like Auburn and then the name of the town or the uh, state, and that would have told where the troop was from. And then there's a little gaggle of more modern patches here. Um, again, trying to match things up. That looks to be like about a 19, you know, late 70s uh, lodge flap, maybe, maybe not even 70s. Um, these patches here, these tans, these are from the 1980s, so that's nothing. There's a couple different generations going on. Um, a little gavel, that's cute. I don't know what I'll use that for, but this is the one I was really excited about too. Was the uh, mirror patch sash, and what I'm really excited about here is just the different generations of merit badges that are represented on this sash. Okay, so this will get a little zoomy zoom here. All right, so look at the top. So in the top you have uh, signaling and public health and swimming and uh, I believe that's um, pathfinding, uh, life's, or, uh, I'm getting mixed up, personal fitness, safety, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Here's what I think those are. I think those are square merit badges that were cut down to round so back in the day when the Boy Scouts of America, um, up until 1932, 33, merit badges were issued, and they were big square tan background with the, the embroidery here for the patch. And you can see that this is kind of a, th a smaller sash. That these all were, you know, they have they offered a smaller sash. And so this whoever's mom this was cut out that extra material to make it fit on the sash. And that's why these have such a rough edge around them. If you look in real closely, you can see that some mom actually cut those to get them to round. Now here's what's super cool for me as a kind of a collector and also a little bit of a scout historian. Look what happens here, okay? Cut to round, cut to round, cut to round. Uh-oh, that 
and that and that and that and that. Those all look different, right? So here's what those are. Starting in the mid-1930s, the BSA went to something that collectors call wide crimped. And what that was is that instead of having that square-shaped merit badge, they had, I don't know how it was made, but they had a, a system where it was creased, a real super permanent crease was put in the patch so that it now was shaped round and it would fit on the sash better. And the reason why it's called a wide crimp, you can look at that there. There's about a quarter of an inch there between the ring and the outside edge. And you can see on all these patches like that. So that tells you it's mid-1930s because later, just a few years later, in the 19, um, I think by World War II anyways, they had a very narrow crimp. So instead of having this, this wide crimp here, it's about half that size. And the patches are a little different color. So here we have, um, I think that's metalworking. Um, that's photography. That's like scholarship or book reading or something, public speaking. And, of course, wood carving, which still has the same design as today. Um, then this guy down here, I'll need to kind of just double check my homework. I'm pretty sure that that is um, an Explorer patch. Boy, I really should have looked at my books before I got on this video. Um, that is one of two things. Um, that is either... Ah, that might be, see, these are felt. That's felt green on tan. Um, that might be a senior patrol leader one too, which would kind of match that pen that we saw. Anyways, I'll do my homework next time before I get on these videos. But hope you enjoyed this uh, unboxing collection. I'm really excited to get this uh, collection. The older items are, are going into my permanent collection and I will use them on display. Of course, I'll do my homework and make sure I know exactly which patches I have and I can label them. But uh, anyways, Jason Spangler, the Santee Swapper. You can find me on the internet at scoutpatchcollectors.com. I also have several eBay stores that I run, so this is kind of what I do. You can see my warehouse in the back, and I have a lot of shipping to do today, so I'll be very, very busy. All right, thanks very much.